morning, Bulldog fans, and welcome to UNC Asheville Bulldog Update. Hi, I'm Mike Gore, joined by head men's basketball coach Nick McDevitt. And coach, uh, we've had a good break here, and the break couldn't come at a better time for, uh, for your team, could have it? That's right, Mike. Uh, it, it's a welcome break. Uh, it's, uh, we've got finals week here at UNC Asheville, and so it gives our, our kids a chance to completely focus on their studies, but also for our team that's been banged up pretty, uh, pretty good this, uh, this uh, short season here at the beginning. Um, it, it gives us a chance to try to get healthy. And how are anybody else get hurt now? I, I, I heard one of our managers is hurt now, so it. Uh, we, we've had such great luck in that uh, in that regard. We we do have a manager down right now with a broken foot, uh, but in all seriousness, it uh, it is a good time for us. It's an important time for us. Uh, we we talked uh, to our team as soon as we were done uh, with the Charlotte game. About now, we've got two objectives, two goals over the next. Uh, 10 to 12 days, and that's to get healthy and to study. And uh, we've we've been able to do that. Uh, we're uh, approaching a couple of home games here uh, coming up, and uh, look forward to get back here to Kimmel Arena. Yeah, much has been said about uh, our first eight games away from home, six uh, six in enemy territory, two on neutral sites, and uh, but now the the, uh, the tide shifts. Five of our next six are at beautiful Kimmel Arena. Bulldogs are 26 and six over here the last two uh, over, over the last two years. And none of those games will be easy games, of course, but it's just nice to be home, isn't it, Coach? It is uh, for anybody that uh, just travels. Uh, you think about. Uh, when, when you go on vacation, uh, how hard sometimes it is on your body just with flights, things like that. Uh, you, you, if you're in the business world, you go away for vacation. Uh, it, it's nice to be away, but when you get back, you've got a lot of work in front of you. Uh, and it's, sometimes it takes a toll on your body, just the, the travel does. And uh, to some degree, that's uh, what we've experienced here in the early going, just a lot of travel, uh, a lot of wear and tear on your body. We played against a lot of tough opponents. Uh, now, don't get me wrong, we're, we weren't going on vacation, uh, no but uh, you know we're still studying on the road, but it's not quite like uh, being here uh, at Kimmel Arena, being able to study, go to class, uh, kind of have a regular routine. So we're looking forward to, to getting back here to Asheville. And as I said, five of our next six are, are here at Kimmel Arena, Coach, and uh, you've been here a long time, I've been here a long time, and, and this arena means so much to us, doesn't it? It does. It's a beautiful place. Uh, it's been great to us so far in the two years we've been here. As you mentioned, uh, we've got a terrific record here. Uh, we've played a lot of good basketball teams, and uh, the teams coming up here over the break are no different. Um, UNC Wilmington, uh, Ohio University, two very good basketball programs will be here over the course of the next uh, three or four weeks, and so it's going to be a challenge for us. Coach, now on Sunday we, we have our one road game in this stretch in December. That's it. That's it. A very good Atlantic Sun team, U.S. Uh, a USC Upstate, Eddie Payne's team, five and four in the season, opened the year with an impressive win over Virginia Tech. This will be a big challenge for the Bulldogs Sunday in Spartanburg. It will. They they've uh, they always do a great job. Um, coach Payne is a terrific coach. He always has his teams prepared. Uh, it, it's a difficult matchup. They're really athletic. They've got some uh, good young players, uh, veteran players as well. Uh, Tory Craig, preseason player of the year. He's as good as any player we'll face all season. Uh, he's had some uh, memorable moments here in Kimmel Arena, and uh, we'll have our uh, we'll have our hands full with him down in Spartanburg. And you know, it, it, but it's a game that'll probably go down the wire because the past three years since the series resumed, uh, coaches they, they've been amazing games. We think about the one time we went to the Hodge Center back in the 2010-11 season, lost that heartbreaker in double overtime. We started out flat. Uh, made a pretty good run to lead, and then we had a backcourt violation um, that allowed them to tie the game. And and then two years ago, you know, really they should have won, but we made a great rally down nine with four minutes to go and won by one by eight. And then last year, a game we really should have won, but they came back and beat us. So it's been terrific basketball. It has. It's two very evenly matched teams. Uh, we we've recruited against each other. We know their players pretty well. They know ours. We play against each other almost every season. And as you mentioned, that over the last three years, uh, we had a close overtime loss at their place a couple of years ago. We were down nine going into the under four media here two years ago and made an incredible 16-0 run to end the game uh, to pull that one out. And then, of course, last year, uh, it, it all came down to the final seven or eight seconds of the game. They made a couple free throws and, and won the game here. So uh, we don't expect anything uh, different as we face uh, Upstate here in the coming days. 
Now, Coach, uh, not to look too far ahead, but we will a little bit to Virginia Intermont that'll come in here uh, on Friday. This is a much improved ball club. The Bulldogs played them three years ago and had their way with the one by 54 points. And uh, but this program is much improved, and it will expect a much tougher uh, test uh, on Friday against Virginia Intermont. Absolutely, they're 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 a good basketball team. Uh, their team is very different than it was at that point. So is ours. So yes, Asheville beat Virginia Intermont uh, by 50 several years ago. Uh, but two very different ball clubs this year, and uh, you know we just need to make sure that we're prepared. It's, it, a lot of games over the break here are kind of attitude games. You've got to stay focused on the task at hand. You can't look forward uh, to games down the road. Uh, we're getting close to conference play, but we've got to stay focused on a game-by-game -game basis. We've got to look at Bluefield. We've got to look at Upstate. We've got to look at Virginia and Vermont. We can't look past those teams uh, to the next game. So uh, we've got to stay focused on, on you know, game-by-game -game basis. All right, Nick, thanks for stopping on by. We look forward to some, seeing some home games at Kimmel Arena. We'll be back with more with UNC Astro Bulldog Update with head women's basketball coach Brenda Mock Kirkpatrick right after this timeout. It's the best time of the year. It's time for UNC Asheville Bulldog Basketball. UNC Asheville's legacy is what drives us and brings us to the dawn of a new era. Bring your family to watch exciting NCAA men's and women's basketball. Tickets are affordable. Get your tickets now because it's your city and your team. You sometimes take the long route just to see what you might discover. If you enjoy finding the art in science and the science in art. If you want to design a career and not just find a job. If you won't give up until you figure it out, then we have just the place for you. University of North Carolina, Asheville. There's a place where past vacation memories are talked about and shared for a lifetime, where new experiences never disappoint, and where the only thing better than visiting is coming back again. Visit Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. 60 miles of picture-perfect beach line will take your breath away, but leave your wallet happy because you shouldn't have to sacrifice on your family vacation. Visit Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Experience so much more for so much less. And leave with memories to last a lifetime. Welcome back to UNC Asheville Bulldog Update. I'm Mike Gore along with head women's basketball coach Brenda Mock Kirkpatrick. Coach, you've told us uh, all year, you know, from, from the start, you know, obviously the Bulldogs are much, much, much improved, maybe the most improved team in the country this season. But you've warned us that we'd have a lot of close games. And that's what's happened a lot this year. And we won our share, but last week we lost two tough ones. The USC Upstate on Saturday by one point, and then to Campbell on, on Wednesday night, losing by eight, and but obviously a much closer uh, final score. But... Uh, Still, our team is progressing, but sometimes that progress happens with close losses, doesn't it? Well, absolutely. You know, our team, we knew going in this year that we were going to be in a lot of close games, which is a great thing, a positive thing. And, um, you know, at this point in the season, I'm encouraged as much as I've been discouraged just because I know how much we, how far we've come uh, in our process. And, you know, again, we were playing a lot of youngsters. Um, we're learning through experience, which I think will be great um, and for our future. And, um, you know, again, uh, it's, it's it's been tough this past week, but we've learned a lot, and hopefully we can apply that in our future games. Saturday, a tough one-point loss to USC Upstate, a team that just is a jinx team, seems like, for us. A, uh, a good start to the game, up, up by 13, made some shots, 9 of 12 early, then kind of went cold, only scored three points uh, the rest of the half. I thought our defense was good throughout, but just came down to a few possessions here and there. I thought they are rebounding in the second half. They got some key offensive rebounds. Uh, I don't, don't want to say if that spelled a difference. You can look at 135 things that were the difference, but... Uh, but those little things sometimes add up in a close one-point loss, don't they, Coach? Oh, absolutely. You know, and I think with a young team, you know, what you're trying to emphasize is, is to get them to pay attention to the details. And that was a game where, you know, USC Upstate at the end of the game really paid attention to the details, going after those offensive rebounds, and we didn't box out. You know, executing under pressure, and we didn't execute under pressure. And, you know, hats off to that USC Upstate team. They're well coached. Obviously, they play really, really hard. And I thought we played really, really hard, uh, but we did not execute. And, you know, obviously, again, um, you know, when playing with some inexperience, that's going to happen down the stretch. And, you know, the, the important thing to realize is that 
you know, where we are in our process, you know, that's okay now, but a couple of games from now, we've got to start applying these experiences to what we're doing in the game. And hopefully we'll see that going forward um, starting Tuesday with North Carolina A&T. All right, Coach, let's look at some of the highlights from the UNC Asheville and USC Upstate as the Bulldogs took on the Spartans at Camel Arena. Nice crowd on hand. Yeah, it was a great environment for a basketball game and really a, a great spectators game. Obviously, wish the result had been different, but um, and there you see some of the freshmen that we're talking about. That was Jada Brayboy to Tiana Knuckles. Jada again uh, making some plays for us. And Leah Warmack really had a great game on the inside. We've really got to start looking for her more. There she is on the defensive end. And again, Jada Brayboy, who um, really learning, learning a lot for us and playing well at the point. Nice three by Shanice, a nice pass from Brittany Gwynn late in the first half. And here we go with the second half highlights. Brittany Gwynn bringing it up, and there's Jeannie Buckner knocking down a three. Yeah, and that was a huge play. And you see our bench there, great energy for that game. Again, we really fought hard. And once we can put execution with the fight, I really think we're going to start seeing results in terms of more wins. Nice move by Jada, who just, uh, as, a, as you talk about, Coach, I'm going to learn by fire. We're relying on her. And I think that that's, you know, again, the best way to learn is when some, somebody's depending upon you. Her minutes count, and, and they really are valuable to us. You know, again, making a great entry pass to Leah right there, who comes through for us down the stretch. Bulldogs lose it by one point, have a chance at the end, have, but, but a couple shots don't go, don't can coach you. You know, you know, I was impressed though. Upstate was up by fourth about a minute to go, and still you guys didn't give up, and, and, you, and, you, and, you, and, and you came down and have a chance to win. And, and again, this team continues to get better, but uh, like, like we keep talking about, some close games can, can, be, can go either way, and that one, that one went the other way. That was a tough one, though, on Saturday, wasn't it? It was tough, and uh, we did have an opportunity to win. I think that speaks a lot for our kids. You know, in the past, perhaps being down four with 45 seconds left, I call a timeout. Um, you know, we execute, we get a score, we play some tough defense, we give ourselves an opportunity. Um, you know, and again, it's something that we'll learn from, and hopefully that's going to pay off in the future. I thought the one that there's a disappointing end was the rebounding at 40 to 40. He had a 10 rebound edge with about 15 minutes to go, and we've talked a little about, but, but they got some big offensive rebounds down, down the stretch, didn't they, Coach? Yeah, Brittany Starling and, uh, you know, Tony Ramadi, I know I recall her getting a huge off uh, offensive rebound when we didn't box out, when we didn't execute the little things. But again, we watched that game on, on Sunday and learned a lot from it and um, really did apply some of those things in our game Wednesday night against Campbell. And then hopefully you're really going to see, you know, after exams are over now, thank goodness, um, really see some progress from these young kids. What's the health of the team right now, Coach? Well, positive. You know, we're healthy and, um, you know, everybody's really uh, contributing. And so we are deep. And I think that's, you know, collectively, again, looking at our game against a team like Campbell. You know, Campbell, uh, very good first five, but collectively really thought we were better than, than Campbell. Um, had more depth and we have more quality depth. So it's just learning to play with consistency down the stretch. All right, Coach. We'll, we'll take a look at that Campbell game right after this timeout on UNC Asheville Bulldog Update. These are the sultans of shirts versus skins. The graceful gods of imaginary buzzer beaters. Where win or go home means a walk through the garage. And your shining moment is spelled H-O-R-S-E. Welcome to the dance, Cinderella, and let the madness begin. Ingles, your official sponsor of Driveway Basketball. It's the best time of the year. It's time for UNC Asheville Bulldog Basketball. UNC Asheville's legacy is what drives us and brings us to the dawn of a new era. Bring your family to watch exciting NCAA men's and women's basketball. Tickets are affordable. Get your tickets now because it's your city and your team. Welcome back to UNC Asheville Bulldog Update. Mike Gorworth, head women's basketball coach, Brenda Mock, Patrick Coach. We go to Campbell on Wednesday night, a team that's picked to finish in the, in the upper division of the Big South. Fell behind early, 22 to 9, but made a wonderful rally. Uh, actually led by three er, uh, early in the second half. A tie game with about eight minutes to go before Campbell pulls away at the end. I guess the rough start kind of. I, I kind of played in late in the game, didn't it? 
Well, it did. We seemed a bit fatigued, Mike, and I don't know if that was from travel and exams and so forth, but again, we've had that particular week circled on our calendar as, as a challenge for our kids and um, thought we had a, a little bit of a shaky start, weren't executing versus their 1-2-2 two, two half court trap and uh, turned the ball over a little bit. Like I said, weren't executing, but our kids really dug in and I, the focus that they had and certainty that we were going to come back. But obviously it takes a lot out of you physically right. and mentally to come back from, I think we were down 22 to nine, right. came back, um, tied the score, I believe in the first half. So, you know, hats off to our kids for getting it back into a, re you know, a reasonable, um, a manageable deficit, you know, going into halftime, we were down 30 to 35, but we have to start like we want to finish right. in games. And uh, we didn't do that last night. And I think that did something to our kids' confidence. Okay, coach, let's look at the highlights from, from the Campbell game at beautiful Gore Arena. I know there's no Gore relation. Gore Arena. No relation. Hmm. You know, obviously, Brittany Gwynn, I think she thinks we get style points for the difficulty in shot. Um, and that's something that all of our kids last night, we tended to make, make shots a little bit more difficult. Um, you know, Tiana Knuckles, clearly one of the best three-point shooters on our squad. Um, actually, her high school team was in attendance last oh, night, great. so that was good. Uh, she came up big for us. Again, Brittany Gwynn with another tough shot. Uh, and you see that we start digging, uh, cutting into that lead there. Um, just a huge offensive rebound from Tyler Smith. You know, played a lot of quality minutes for us last night. Probably should have played her more in the second half uh, in the post. And then a great tip in, you know, from KJ Weaver. Great energy as we're making our comeback there in the first half. Jada Brayboy to Paige Love. And then Paige will, will hit a spot three or two. That's not really her game, but um, hits a big one for us there. And then at the end of the half, we, we didn't execute and get the shot that we would like to have gotten. So, but again, cutting it to, to a five-point game after being down 12. Here we go. Action in the second half where the Bullows came out, came out in fire and took the lead for a while in the second half. It's obviously great to execute on your first offensive possession in the first, uh, second half, rather. Big offensive rebound right there. You know, it was nip and tuck um, to about the 50-point mark on Wednesday. Rebounding was great in this game as UNC Asheville out-rebounded Campbell. First time Campbell's been out-rebounded this season. Big shot there from Shanice, you know, and she's a great catch-and-shoot three-point shooter, really relying on her to hit those for us. Brittany Gwynn tying the score at 50, and that was probably the mark uh, there at that nine-minute mark where we went on a, a little bit of a drought, scoring drought. Tiana Knuckles taking it strong to the basket. Big play for us, you know, and, and we fouled a bit on Wednesday night. But again, got down by, I think, nine it was again, and then cut the lead to six and just didn't have, you know, enough in the end with them going to the line 42 times or shooting free 42 free throws. throws. Yeah, it was a, a lot of free throws. That was not, as opposed to the game against USC Upstate, Mike, that was not a fan-friendly game. <laughs> <laughs> I am glad that that was in Gore Arena and not Kimmel Arena for the simple fact that, that you know, obviously we, we play well at home, but that was not a pretty game. We fouled a lot. And again, that's part of executing right. and discipline and composure. Uh, a lot of great things from that game. Again, like you said, Campbell, um, I, I believe they're 7-2 and two now. Right. Um, you know, really picked uh, third or fourth in our league. So our kids can gain a lot of confidence from going there and competing without playing well. You know, we did some good things, but overall that was not a great game for us. And, um, you know, so, so I'm encouraged by the fact that we can play that way and still compete, but we've got to play better and we've got to execute and really expect more out of ourselves going forward. Well, Coach, you've had this week circled because of exams and stuff. Now we just turn the page and, and go to next week, don't we? Absolutely. And uh, another great challenge with North Carolina A&T coming in. You know, they're 6-1 and one on the season with wins over Richmond, uh, Georgia State, uh, App State by 20. You know, really athletic and aggressive team on defense. Really generate a lot of their offense from their defense. It'll be a great challenge, but I think an exciting game. You know, I hope a lot of people can come out Tuesday night, continue to support our team because we really are growing and uh, play a fun style of basketball, and a and is really going to challenge us. And a great opportunity, though. You know, they are 6-1, and one, and, Coach, their program really has prospered the last couple of years. I think of 2010, they go to the third round of the WNIT with wins over Wake Forest and, and Charlotte, and, and they have kept it. And this is, this is not a fluke team with some transfers or something. This has been a good program the last few years of the Aggies, haven't they? Absolutely, and that's exactly why I scheduled the game. You know, we really want to challenge ourselves in the non-conference so we can prepare ourselves for the conference. You know, we play 20 conference games, Mike. We've only played two. We've got 18 left. You know, so we are going to host North Carolina a 
UNT, and then we're going to go on the road to Vandy. Another big challenge, but that's what you want as a college basketball player. You want to be challenged, and you're only going to grow in those challenging environments. And so we're going to challenge our kids on and off the court here. And, um, you know, I think that people who are watching our program can see the growth, no and question. hopefully that's going to continue, you know, with a win on Tuesday night. That's what we're going for. We don't just want to grow. We want to win here, and our kids really want that. And um, they're really working hard and, and making us all proud. So hopefully, you know, on Tuesday night we're going to come out with a win. All right, Brenda, thanks so much for stopping by. We'll see you at Kim Arena on Tuesday. All right, that's head women's basketball coach Brenda Mockerpatrick back with more on UNC Asher Bulldog Update right after this timeout. It's the best time of the year. It's time for UNC Asheville Bulldog Basketball. UNC Asheville's legacy is what drives us and brings us to the dawn of a new era. Bring your family to watch exciting NCAA men's and women's basketball. Tickets are affordable. Get your tickets now because it's your city and your team. Welcome back to UNC Asheville Bulldog Update. Hi, I'm Mike Gore. We have a very special guest uh, joining us right now. That's Aaron Sanders, UNC Asheville Athletics Director of Athletics Annual Giving and Alumni Affairs. Aaron, great to have you with us today. Well, thanks for having me, Mike. Aaron, we've got a very special pro special project going on right now as we look at uh, look at right now. Tell us about this paving project. Well, this is the Pave the Way to Excellence campaign. Uh, it's a new program where we give uh, supporters the opportunity to make a gift of $200. It's 100% tax deductible. And for that, they get an engraved paver stone that we'll place outside of the Sherrill Center and on Alumni Way. And Aaron, this has been going pretty popular. This has been pretty popular so far, hasn't it? It has. It's a new campaign, and it just started, but we've already sold over 50 pavers, and we expect it to pick up speed. And um, when you buy one of these, uh, how long will it take to see your name or, or, or see what you write on there or, or what you want on there? How long will it take to, uh, for the brick to be out there? Uh, it usually takes about two weeks, and then we get it turned around, and, and it's, it's outside on, uh, right in front here on the plaza of the Sherrill Center or down on Alumni Way. It's pretty quick. How can folks get more information? Uh, if people are interested, they can either go online to uncabulldogs.com. Uh, it's right at the top of the page there. There's a link to click on. Or they can call me directly at 250-3858. Give Aaron a call. This is a, this is a great project, and this is a great thing to help raise money for UNC Asheville student-athletes. And, and also, we're also raising money for UNC Asheville students as well, not just student-athletes. That's right. We're benefiting uh, you know, non-student-athletes as well as our own Bulldogs. Uh, the price does go up on January 1st to $230, but again, it's all tax deductible. It's a great gift for the holidays or for graduation, uh, anniversaries, or just to show your support of the team. Now, Aaron, in your other role, you're also head of the Bulldog Athletic Association, which helps raise funds for UNC Asheville Student Athlete Scholarships with a lot of different uh, things. But one of the ways people, if, if they aren't a member of the BAA, is, uh, is any donation they make benefits UNC Asheville Student Athletes, doesn't it? It does. Uh, the Bulldog Athletic Association, it's an annual fund designed to support uh, the scholarship funding that we need here at UNC Asheville. We've got eight Bulldogs that are graduating uh, today. Uh, we're very pleased with that, but there are 200 student athletes and there's a lot of scholarship funds, about $1.6 million that we need to raise every year. Uh, since we're a state school, we can't have uh, any state support, and so we need the generosity of donors, we need uh, corporate partnerships, ticket sales, but really that membership in the BAA is a very solid backbone that supports uh, scholarships for these student athletes. And we've got some, in the BAA will, be, will have some exciting events coming up to, uh, in 2014 to help that also help raise money for the BAA, won't it? That's right. Uh, you know, we do a number of events to help raise funds. Uh, in April 7th, we will have uh, a scholarship raffle. Last year, we raffled off a card. This year, it looks like we're going to have some dream getaway vacations. Uh, we'll have April 15th is the Our Turn to Play luncheon, and that's a celebration of women as champions and leaders. And then we'll have our golf tournament, uh, the BAA Golf Classic, and that'll happen in August. Aaron, this is a real passion for you helping student athletes out. You started out here at UNC Ash about three years ago helping open this great building, and then you moved into this post. And uh, you've, ta you've talked to me about, you've told me about how you, you really have a passion for helping these student athletes. I do. Uh, you know, I think the vast majority of the students here at UNC Ash will realize that they're probably not going to have a pro career. And so they take their commitment to their studies very seriously and are looking at uh, what their education can lead to uh, for their lives. You know, we do try to build champions 
champions in athletics and leaders for life here. And so, uh, you know, they are committed to their studies. They're committed to being involved in the community. Uh, the student athletes here last year gave over 2,000 hours of community service, and it's a broad base of nonprofits and charities and community groups and uh, the school systems here. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm very pleased to be trying to raise funds to support those kinds of activities. You know, I, I, as I mentioned earlier, you know, uh, you helped open this building up and, uh, and, uh, and, and did a great job doing it. And, uh, and just tell us a little bit about what this building means to you and just how, what it means to the community as well. Uh, it, this building is a game changer for the university. It's a game changer for the university and it was a life changer for me personally. You know, I'll be the first one to tell you that I couldn't have done anything that we accomplished last year without the great team that's here in the athletics department, university enterprises, campus recreation, and across this campus. Uh, but we had over 100,000 people in each of the first two years of this building being open. Uh, the number one team uh, in men's basketball, the number one team in the state for high school uh, girls basketball, uh, expos, concerts, uh, you know, it's, it's mind boggling to think of all the different types of events that go on here even though we consider it the, the home for basketball for the Bulldogs. So uh, there's a great amount of pride. It gave me the chance to be in this fantastic community where my family, my wife's family is from. And uh, I, I consider myself very lucky to be a part of the team here. All right, Aaron, thanks so much for stopping on by. Thank you All so right, much. All right, that's Aaron Sanders. We'll have more UNC Asheville Bulldog update right after this timeout. It's the best time of the year. It's time for UNC Asheville Bulldog Basketball. UNC Asheville's legacy is what drives us and brings us to the dawn of a new era. Bring your family to watch exciting NCAA men's and women's basketball. Tickets are affordable. Get your tickets now because it's your city and your team. Join us each Saturday morning for UNC Asheville Bulldog Update. UNC Asheville Bulldog Update each Saturday morning at 11 a.m. on My40. Zaxby's, indescribably good. This week in UNC Asheville, Bulldog Athletics looks like this. On Sunday, the UNC Asheville women's swims team is at North Florida starting at 10 a.m. The men's basketball team heads down to Spartanburg to take on USC Upstate at the Hodge Center. Game time is at 3 o'clock. On Tuesday, the women's basketball team returns to Kimmel Arena. They'll take on MEAC Power North Carolina A&T. Tip-off is at 7 o'clock. And then the men's basketball team plays right before Christmas on Friday when they take on Virginia Intermont. Game time is at 7 o'clock. You can get tickets for these games at uncabulldogs.com. That's going to do it this week for UNC Asheville Bulldog Update. We'll see you next Saturday.